getting past by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So Newhoff in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting uh, with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari, mate, with this. It's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and Abrochi's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Push more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's still such up. He's left on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Yeah, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of have fun. Yeah. It's all I'm about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunched up now?
Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's still slow trouble. He's left on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! One hundred miles will decide this cha the championship here for the JPB NASCAR Super Series for 2024, and we've had to revise things a little bit. Of course, uh, round five is here and now. We're at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for what is going to be a 40-lap decider. My name's Alex Goldschmidt. Joining me in the booth tonight is Dean Biggles. Dean, glad to be alongside you with some good old oval action. Of course, uh, for those wondering. It is 2.5 miles here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This current variation of the Oval has been in use since just over a decade, and the circuit has been open for nearly 115 years. But, Dean, we've got a really exciting championship. Two main title protagonists, and it's going to come down to the wire. Well, we'll show those. Uh, welcome, everybody, in the chat to say hello. If you want, Alex does bite, but I don't. But exactly. You're talking about that one right there, Alex. Have a look at that. And you can also give us a little bit of that mathematics of that brain of yours to figure out who can win, who can't win. What's the possibilities? Well, the possibilities are there are two main title protagonists, first and second in the championship. Human Stitchbury has to finish ninth or higher to win this season. Tim Perry's got to go all out for the W. If he picks up the win, it's 40 points. So even if Ewan ends up 10th, they'll be tied on 170. But we don't want it to go down to a count back. We want to have a, a bona fide winner on the racetrack. Kim Andre Bjorkland, a regular in the JPB GT4 series, which will be uh, taking place tomorrow night. Uh, not present, uh, according to our timing. Uh, Sergio Cruz is fourth in the standings ahead of Jordan Wenzel. Thortolo. Uh, Vegard olsen -Lear. Jack Werrell makes a return here for Indianapolis. He's currently placed eighth on 101 points. Head of Carl Jacquelet. Mark Werrell also uh, rounds out the top 10 level with Jacquelet on 99 apiece. Paul LeMay, uh, Alvaro Va Vasquez Garcia, Torbjorn Mele, Paul Clark and Ryan Hyatt ran at the top 15. As we are now going to get into a rapid fire five minute qualifying session around this two and a half mile oval. You can see that the, we got points all the way down to 36th position. But of course, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, known for the Indy 500, of course, the month of May at the Brickyard. But it really is going to be a case of seeing who is going to be top of the timesheets. You and Stitchbury, the person that could take the title by finishing as low as night, is down on the lower part of the circuit, gearing up for his first run in qualifying. We're going to be seeing speeds hitting around 200 miles an hour and of course backpack racing is very much part and parcel of nascar racing as we both very well know dean yes you're exactly right just going back to that countback situation rather than doing a countback what we'll elected to do now you and we can make that decision up at the booth is that the two drivers if they do get the equal score what we'll do is that we'll have them only two out there for a sprint 10 lap race and we'll make it in the full wet of course there's no wet weather tires How's that? Do you think that's fair out there? Anybody in the chat, would you agree with that? Well, that could be the I, I title think, of the Yeah, it could be. <laughs> That'll be an interesting one. David van der Waals, who is competing with us, the Olympus Esports number 32 Chevrolet, is also out for timed qualifying. So, uh, and at the moment, you and Stitchbury, the Welsh driver, uh, based out of Newport in South Wales, uh, not, has been quickest in free practice. Uh, Tim Perry, the Altitude uh, Esports number 83 Chevrolet, was running in the top four as we are riding board with the number 22 running in the Ford Mustang. Uh, these are the next gen cars. Very close to the wall as he is going to come out of t turn four and put the pedal to the metal, four to the floor. And look how close the car nearly drifting out of the uh, fourth and final turn here in Indianapolis as he comes across the stripe. Get those times 51, up, yeah, yeah 51.954. Jack Werrell uh, for the Spontex CDM Esports number 65 Toyota goes P2. 
Carl Jacolette from photomedia.uk in the 03 Chevy uh, goes second. But then Tim Perry decides to punch in a 52.013. So there's Carl Jacolette's uh, bright red Chevy. And he's currently running third ahead of Paul LeMay. Daniel Sedgley, Paul Clark, Jack Werrell and Torbjorn Mele have all put down lap times. Top seven covered by just under, well, make that the top eight. As Alvaro Vasquez Garcia goes seventh in the number 15 Ford. There's Paul LeMay. Like the hot rod style flames on the side of his car. There's uh, Matt Barnett. As uh, he has also set a lap time that's put him uh, tenth ahead of oh. Mark Werrell. As David Vanderbals comes in with a barnstormer. 51.854. Oh, Tim Perry. The, uh, oh, Perry now responds. Goes... Uh, 39 thousandths quicker so the run in pole position uh, the run for pole position is going to be very very close we've got a minute but under just over a minute and a half left here's Stuart R Pearson and the number 23 Ford he's coming out of the final corner what's the lap time going to be from Pearson not set a lap time yet goes across the stripe and has just gone 13th but Tim Perry is trying to strike the first hammer blow Vegard Olsen Lear, the Norwegian from Sim Racing Norway, did go up to 12th before uh, Pat Seaborn and M Matt Barnett uh, managed to better the Norwegian. And uh, Olsen Lear decides to, uh, well, spin the car around. Seaborn in the uh, 78 Chevy. Now trying to gain a little speed down the uh, back stretch here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 2.5 miles of pure, unadulterated, full throttle madness. We're coming down to the final few seconds in time qualifying. It's 40, nearly 42 degrees Celsius. That's north of 95 degrees Fahrenheit on the tarmac here at Indianapolis. But Seaborn for the Peng Remap Racing uh, Team in the number 78 lights up the uh, tyres, breaks into the pit lane. And Tim Perry has put it on pole position. Ewan Stitchbury, even if he finishes fourth, has got the title in the bag. But Perry has dealt the first hammer blow. That's the psychological advantage that Tim Perry needed there, Dean, in qualifying. He's put it on pole. Um, you're absolutely right. That's the best thing he can do. Absolutely. Get it there and put the car at the top of the timesheets. There's something else I wanted to say really quickly. I can't quite remember now. Anybody, please enjoy it. We'll get those uh, grid up there for you right now, actually. I'm thinking of it, but there you go, my friend. So Tim Perry starts the final round of this NASCAR Super Series for JPB on pole position. David Van Der Waals alongside on the front row. Paul Clark and the current championship leader, Ewan Stitchbury, let Ryan out, round out row two. Alvaro Garcia and Paul LeMay, row three. Carl Jacolet and Sergio Cruz, row four. Completing the top ten, it's Daniel Sedgley and Torbjorn Mele. Jack Werrell and, uh, and Pat Seaborn complete row six. And rounding out the 16-strong grid here in Indianapolis, it's going to be Matt Barnett, Vegard Olsen, Lear, Stuart Pearson, and Mark Werrell. We've got 40 laps. That's going to be 100 miles of this Indianapolis Motor Speedway circuit. We're just waiting uh, for a few drivers to ready up on the grid. They're starting to do so now, and then we'll head on the uh, pace, the couple of pace laps that will then set everything in motion. But there you see it's 13 points between Stitchbury and Perry for the JPP NASCAR Super Series title. A uh, big thank you to islandsracing.co.uk uh, for their support as always. We're just waiting for Torbjorn Melo to uh, ready up onto the grid and when he has done so then we'll be getting things under starter's orders. Well, let's do a standing start. What do you reckon, gentlemen? That'll be, in that'll be interesting. <laughs> There's that'll the brick yard, of course. Very... There is your brick stripe right there. This is the one oh. that everybody wants to win, isn't it? This is the one that you want to tick off your calendar. This is like, you know, this, uh, for some reason, Monaco, but, you know, Spa, I'd say, maybe Silverstone, things like that. But, of course, if you're talking about a track in the United States of America, this is the one. And uh, this is one little trivial trivia for you there, my friend. When was the last time that Formula One did race at Indy? Late 2000s, if I remember correctly, when we had the Michelin versus Bridgestone tyre war and only six cars competed. 
Yes, that's right. That's, they got a lot of foul taste 2006, in 2006, if, if my yeah. memory serves me correctly. And that basically caused, what, almost a decade after that we didn't have any races in um, in the United States until, of course, they got Austin Circuit so, so the Americans back in. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, way back when. I can't believe it's been around about a decade uh, since Formula One has uh, been back in the United States, of course, now with uh, three venues, of course, uh, Cota. Um, then you've also got Miami and uh, Las Vegas being the latest addition uh, to that. But there you see the iRacing pace car setting everything in motion. We've got 16 competitors, 40, 40 laps of this two and a half mile circuit. And when we complete lap 40 and the checkered flag is waved by Barney the Flag Marshal, we'll decide our JPP NASCAR Super Series champion here at the Brickyard. So it is going to be Perry from Van der Waals on the front row. Stitchbury's got to get a move on very, very quickly. If he, he, And I know for a fact, and you know for a fact as well, Dean, he will not want to stay where he is. He will want to be at the sharp end and win it at the front of the field. He does not want Perry to have that opportunity of getting that W at this late stage of the championship. You are correct, of course. He's got to get it done. And, you know, what Tim Perry's got to, he's got to do what Tim Perry could do best, which is just get up the road and get on with it. I love this track. It, I mean, these cars seem very, very slow on that one. Barney the Flagman, of course, has got that green, green, green to go. This is exciting. This is going to be the title decider. There's the pace car pulling in, my friend. Hold on okay. tight, everybody. Right. <laughs> Hold on for the roller coaster ride here in Indianapolis. Motor Speedway for the green final flag. round of the JPB NASCAR Super Series. It's green, green, green. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. One more time as Perry and Van der Waals slot into first and second position respectively. Stitchbury trying to make a move early doors round the outside of Clark through turn one and he's got the move done already. A great start from the points leader but Tim Perry already has managed to stretch a little bit of an advantage over David van der Waals, the uh, Dutchman from Breda in the Netherlands. Could be a battle here. Jacquelet looking to close in on LeMay for sixth place. And you can see the Bournemouth driver really trying to open up the taps, taps on that uh, next-gen Chevy Camaro. Daniel Sedgley is also looking racy. He's trying to get up the... He's actually got... Uh, that's Jack Werrell in the 65 car, who's gone high, wide and handsome around the outside through turn four. But Perry leads us after the opening lap as we cross the stripe here at the Brickyard. Sedgley losing traction to Jack Werrell. Very much resplendent of the uh, the old Lotus 1970 Formula 1 cars uh, is the livery that is on Jack Werrell's car. Sergio Martinez de la Stitchbury. Cruz being <laughs> Stitchbury's gone high. Yeah, Stitchbury is holding on to P3, but uh, Paul Clark is trying to keep with him in the number 24 Chevrolet in the battle for P3. But uh, it's all been pretty much single file racing. A few high, wide and handsome moments. But Perry has got the advantage. Stitchbury. Oh, the uh, tummy's around. Uh, what have you seen? Oh, well, Jackalette has gone off the circuit at one point and is yeah. dropping all the way back. And uh, well, he's just been passed around the outside through the exit of turn number four by Mark Werrell. Uh, Jack and uh, Jack and also Mark, uh, father and son, and are also both experienced commentators had the. Uh, Pleasure of meeting Mark many a time and uh, also uh, had the pleasure to interview him at the uh, 24 Hours Sitch and C1 event in 2019 at Silverstone. It's good to see them also uh, oh, getting out on track. But there is a change. Van der Waals, the Flying Dutchman, has got through on Perry, who now finds himself under quick pressure from Ewan Stitchbury. Good shout out for uh, Highlands Racing's Paul Clark in fourth place. He's very much hanging on to the coattails of the Welshman. I wonder if that was a, a strategy call at the moment there to let the, the driver through so he can follow him. Perhaps and try to save those tyres a little bit. You said they've got three sets to use. Is that yeah. including the sets that they've started this race with, of course, because you can't start the race without any tyres? Yes, indeed. Otherwise, you'll have zero wheels on that wagon. But Van der Waals has extended a lead to nearly half a second. Uh, uh, so we've we got a on blinker lap. out there. I don't apologise. That's the... Um, Oh, I can't even click on him at the moment. It's I just, think that was Gar it. yeah, Garcia. Yeah, Garcia. Garcia. Garcia in the number 16 is uh, uh, flickering all over the place. Bar Barnett, however, has got the fastest lap so far. 52.217. 
is staying behind Daniel Sedgley from Olympus Esports. They've just come through turn number three. Um, De La Cruz in the number seven is currently battling away with Pat Seaborn, uh, who's looking up the inside in the number 78 Peng Remap Racing Toyota Camry. But yeah, I think you might be right there with what Perry's decided to do. They have got three sets of tyres, including the set they start on. They've also got, if required, two fast repairs. But uh, we are coming towards five laps out of 40 being completed. We're on that fifth lap at the moment, and there are some great battles happening uh, from, I think it's Paul LeMay backwards from fifth. Jack Werrell has sprung up the order quite significantly. As you see how close they are on the back stretch between turns two and three to the high wall on the outside. Werrell's up five places, Barnett up five places. Vigard Olsen Lear, who started down in 14th, now rounds out the top 10. But Van der Waals is starting to stretch the legs on the number 32. Uh, so the Olympus Esports Chevrolet leading the way by nearly six tenths of a second. They're going to come across the line. New fastest lap, however, Perry is responding. You're absolutely correct on that one. So we'll see whether or not he's going to uh, spit it up. I'm going to flick it back up there to the start there because it's not a great deal of things at the top of the timesheet. You could see the two drivers here. Remember, important in their championship. We'll start crunching those numbers a little bit further as they're down onto the backstretch. So Stitchbury's still in a good position. Tim needs to win this one. Does he have any teammates? What about your best friends out there, your racing pals right now? They're the ones to could, that could potentially be a helper here. Somebody that can, you know, break up this uh, Stitchberry from anywhere along there. Get past Stitchberry. Try to keep him back. Try to keep him slow. Prevent him from any of this. This is what's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think the person that's going to be the closest to do it is the man behind him, Paul Clark from Island Racing. Look at the closing speed. Oh, we've, yep. we've had a little bit of a touch in the background. That's... Oh, and that's Olsen Lear gets punted it uh, through out of turn number four uh, ends up going down pit road on lap seven out of 40 the Nor the uh the norwegian unfortunately in the pit lane we're going to see what happens I, so uh, yeah. so we got mark well and yeah. Werrell and carl jacklet was actually in front so let's see was there a little bit of assist so olsen lear was being followed by the number seven of uh, martinez de la cruz so they're going to come out of turn four. Oh, Olsen Lear just loses him. the back end yeah. and he does not get contact. So it was all on Vegard Olsen Lear's mistake. Just the back end got loose, twitched, and uh, made him exit stage left into pit road. And uh, might have just uh, decided, well, you know what? Now's maybe the best time for a set of boots. And here comes Daniel Sedgley up the inside of Matt Barnett through into T1 and is he going to get the move done not quite yet but he might get the side draft he has to he has to slot back in behind Barnett who's right on the coattails of Jack Werrell in the number 65 so this is the battle for 6th 7th and 8th Barnett decides to come out of the slipstream down the back stretch he's not Ill alongside enough Werrell to get that side draft, but he's going to get closer still. He's going to get launch it up the inside through on the 65. Ooh. They bang panels. Door banging, my friend. That's, yep, that's, indeed. That's racing, driving. Yep, they're coming out of turn four now. This good over the door for Sedgley yep. to tuck neatly underneath uh, on the inside of turn number four. He gets through on Barnett. Will he have the run? On Werrell. I think the answer on this might be a no, but he's going to be ahead of Barnett. He's going to go down to the low side of the circuit, makes the move fully complete on Barnett, and that allows Werrell to get away. Stitch for the win out there, says uh, Atoa. This is certainly heating up. These three are the ones that are closest on the track, actually. Sorry, so Sergio Cruz, you can see just in the background is a, another contending battle. But these three have just been absolute Jack Werrell here. Daniel Sedgway and Matt Barnett. They've been completely together this whole time. And once again, side by side, you can go three abreast. You can even go four abreast if you'd like here, gentlemen. It's Indianapolis. There's plenty of space. I don't know if yep. it was recommended, but give us some entertainment. Yep, Jack Werrell has to uh, come down to the lower part of the circuit to close off uh, Matt Barnett on that particular occasion. As we are now on to lap 10 out of 40. So far, the only biggest drama, Vegard Olsen-Lear on lap seven, uh, having a bit of a tank slapper 
And the tail end sliding to the right, taking the Norwegian into pit road inadvertently, but had a nearly a 17 second pit stop on the marks in the box and will have changed tyres. But David van der Waals at the moment is still leading, but Tim Perry is trying to close on in. The gap at its highest was nearly six tenths of a second. Perry has got it down a little bit by a little bit. Every single lap, he's got it down to just over three tenths of a second as we ride on board on the roof cam of the number 90, 99 Ford Mustang next gen car oh. of Matt Parnett as Jack <laughs> Werrell touches the wall on the right hand side of the 65. It was very, very lucky that didn't pinball him over to the other side of the circuit and hard into the wall on the left hand side on the start finish stretch. Now, is that possibly? going to compromise the handling well he's has. wide through turn mm -hmm. one so that damage is going to compromise Jack Werrell Matt Barnett looking through and that's going to be through at turn two Werrell still able to hold on the car might be a little bit loose for the 65 but he manages uh, to gather it back up again and Matt Barnett and the Ford Mustang number 99 still having to settle for eighth at the minute but Sedgley has pulled away and he's trying to close in on Paul LeMay for fifth. He say, he's, say, he's definitely got a little bit. I wouldn't say it's a great deal. You can see that little bite. Is that bite racing or something like that? I think one of those logos that left there. He's certainly taken a bite out of the wall. But these cars yeah, are pretty tough. I mean, you get a little tank slap. I'm going to go back to this one that you mentioned. Here it is. So we'll go back to that battle later on. But Paul LeMay, of course, as you mentioned here, can steal some crucial points away from Stitchberry at the moment. Stitchberry has to do his absolute best to hold on. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is that if Stitchbury gets to where Seaborn is at the moment, Pat Seaborn in the number 78, who's made up three places from 12th to P9, that's the danger zone for Stitchbury. Barnett again against Werrell. This is the run down the back stretch into T3. And Barnett's going to get the job done. That's seventh now for Matt Barnett, and that has made him the highest mover so far up six spots from 13th now currently rounding out the top seven so Jack Werrell might have to he's going to tough it out a little bit I think and what that will mean he may activate his fast repair once down pit road for a first pit stop to put on a new set of tyres on that 65 Toyota Camry one of three and he's uh, oh. Carl Jackalette in the meantime from the photomedia.uk uh, 03 Chevy Camaro has now made it past Pat Seaborn for ninth as we ride on board on the roof cam with Paul LeMay closing in on you in Stitchbury. He's got the run, he's got the look up the inside as they head down to turn three. Paul LeMay through for fourth place. Yeah, brilliant. That looked like a little bit too easy after a degree, considering those drivers that we saw were battling it out before. I wonder if Stitchbury is playing this a little bit more safer. Knowing that, yeah. you know, it's championship, of course, on the line here. Um, you don't want to take too, risk it with the biscuit too much. I did know, sure, can you see a little bit of damage to his car there, to the stage right? Stage on Stitch right car? Front, you can, yeah. yes. Front right, I think there's yeah. been a little bit of a graze. Yes, there is. So even Ewan Stitchbury has not had a 100% easy run. Just go to this camera and see it, yeah, for a second. Yeah, it, is yeah it looks like it's on the right front on the corner. Mm. Uh, just underneath where the headlight would normally be placed. But Ewan Stitchbury, as you said, I think is playing the strategy game here. He knows he doesn't need to win. He just needs to have a fairly clean race. Whereas Jack Werrell is right behind Pat Seaborn. And Barnett, in the meantime, is going to go round the outside of Jack Alette. That's a great move through turn three Matt Barnett still keeping it high yeah. and he still Ooh. gets the move done but Jacklett's going to have the run into turn one exactly. here as we've got one Torbjorn Mail is going into pit lane so Jacklett looking for the move down the start finish stretch into turn one Barnett still keeps to the high side of the circuit Jacklett down low now it's the short shoot up to turn two Barnett still holds on for seventh yeah if you actually notice what, what's happening there as well too is that see barnett's going right up against the wall jacklet you could see wasn't uh, has going up to the inside a little bit more problem is that when you see barnett gets the speed going to the corner but then he he gets so close to the wall he has to lift off because you can see it here a little bit he'll have to lift off because he gets too close to that fence just like that 
Oh, I didn't mind set Jack that an example like that. Is that going to be set oh. down on the pit road? No. I, he can, should be able to come back, but I think maybe, maybe Carl. No, Carl comes back on the track. Yeah, he had to use the escape road there yeah. to keep out of harm's way. That was a, a moment there for Barnett hitting the wall. Then uh, side glancing Jackalette hip checked him. Stuart Pearson, in the meantime, uh, battling over 11th place with Jack Werrell. And Jack has also got to watch his six because Father Mark Ooh. is not too far behind. Jack's and Jack's clipped the wall again. He's Jack in is in si yeah, he's in big time trouble. We've got 25 to go. And Jack is not having a great time out there. Didn't uh, Wasn't with us at Talladega uh, last time out at the Super Speedway. And Father Mark now gets through on son Jack. In the meantime, Ewan Stitchbury has got... He's in trouble. He, well, he's got Daniel Sedgley, the teammate of David Van der Waals, right on his coattails coming out of turn four. And across the stripe we go. We've already started lap number 17, uh, well, lap 16 of this race. We've completed lap 16. We're on to lap 17 now. 24 to go. Van der Waals has extended his lead over Tim Perry. Look the speed to carrying six. through here. Oh, my is he going to go? Sedgley's going to go low. LeMay's gone high. Stitchbury gets through. Sedgley gets through. Now, Sedgley could prove to be a little bit of a possible fly in the ointment for you in Stitchbury because look at the closing speed. They're down the back stretch. And Sedgley's Done. got through. Sedgley's got through on Stitchbury. Stitchbury's trying to do the crossover through out of the final corner, but set well out of turn three. And Sedgley still had the momentum going down to the lower part of the circuit as if to say to Stitch, uh, Stitchbury right I know you need ninth I'm going to make sure you've got one you've got one less position to fight <laughs> over I think so I think yep. absolutely right look at this absolutely fine look at this for pump drafting my friend now you're going to have to left off we can have three way into the corner there you can see some of these cars doing little scrapes up against the fence not everybody is immune to that fence go buy it some lunch take it out for a nice dinner you certainly don't. You certainly want to be kind to her because if she gets angry, my friend, pit road for you. Yeah, Barnett has also had a bit of a hefty whack uh, with the wall, and that involved a hip check to uh, Jackalette, who is closing in on Pat. Well, it's uh, yeah, Jackalette on the inside of Seaborn. This is going through into turn three. Jackalette unable to make the move through. The Seaborn closing nearly glances the wall. This is going to be coming out of turn four. Seaborn going high and wide around the outside of Matt Barnett through turn four. That's an audacious move. It's going to be three wide now because, well, it was three wide for the briefest of moments. Thanks to Carl Jackalette. Jackalette could have the run on Barnett going through into turn one. Barnett still opting to favour that higher line. And Jackalette just keeping towards the inside. Now it's the short shoot up to turn two. Look at the uh, oh no, it's Barnett. Los Polos. <laughs> you know what that's out of everybody. Exactly. Ooh. Spencer fencing some, ta uh, some tacos after this. Jackalette nearly hits the wall. Barnett, I think, just scraped it again. Uh, they've also got with them Alvaro Vasquez Garcia in the uh, number 15 Ford. Two wide between Jackalette and Barnett. This has uh, ended up a little bit uglier previously. But Jackalette is going to get the run as he threw turn four. Then nearly wheel to wheel. Jackalette low. Barnett high and still next to nothing Garcia decides to get the slipstream and look at the closing rates on Barnett this is going to be you're going to have to be careful Alvaro he uh, backs out of it lifts off the throttle loses all that momentum he gained down of turn number four Jacquelette and uh, Barnett again side by side coming out of turn one you can clearly see the closing speed as we're on board with Gar Garcia. You can see Garcia's got that. He's got the slipstream, really, from both. It just sucks you in like a vacuum cleaner. However, as soon as you break the air, look at that. Your speed starts dropping off. It's just like when you put your hand out the window over to the car. You can feel the friction coming past. But he's committing! Three abreast. Oh. Three lifts off. No. Committing. Garcia made it three wide. Barnett was high. Uh, Jacquelette was piggy in the middle. And Garcia was right down to the bottom of the track. So a great little exchange. We are now 20 to go. Got a, uh, Jacquelette touches the wall coming out of turn number four. But look at what it's done to his run of momentum on Barnett. Barnett has now, well, it's Jacquelette ahead by a whisker, by a nose. Through into turn one. Has Jacquelette got the move done? Yes, he has. Coming out of turn two. Garcia also fancies his opportunity 
as they head onto the back stretch. It's uh, oh, these laps the are again. fast going away. Oh, Barnett is just, that's another clumsy mistake. Barnett is going to drop at, out of the top 10, courtesy of Stuart Pearson. Pearson has got through the number 23 Ford Mustang. And now we've got Torbjorn Maley side by side oh, with boy. Mark Werrell, uh, with oh, Sergio Martinez Paul de la Clark's Cruz. Going in. So this okay, is interesting Paul from Clark. P4. Paul Clark, right, okay. And Paul LeMay. Sorry. Okay, Paul LeMay has got up the brakes. Who else is coming in? Matt Barnett is coming in. So the first set of real pit stops coming at just after the halfway point of this 40 lap encounter. So Clark is in, LeMay in, Barnett in. Garcia has got past Seaborn. Uh, and at the minute, uh, David van der Waals has got a... Yeah, we're seeing the lap times drop off a cliff at the minute. Uh, David van der Waals last time, 52-9. Tim Perry, 53-3. Sedgley, high 53-2. Stitchbury, 53-2. Jackalette. They're all running in the 53s to 54s. I think we're at that crossover point. Van der Waals is going to keep the car out. So is Perry. What will Sedgley and Stitchbury do? There's Sedgley, currently P3. So it's looking pretty good for Olympus Esports. Stitchbury also opting to stay oh, out. He's got a uh, back mark again, Mattel, it looks like. It is. No, it's it? uh, no. That's no. That's Jack Werrell behind him. That's Jack Werrell in the 65. Yeah. So Jack Werrell is a lap down. Yeah, but he's towing him. Look at that. He's pushing him deliberately. I'd say, unless he's trying to unlap him. Self, there it is. So he is. I thought he was giving him a nice little push there. Pat Seaborn's in pit road now too. Okay. Could be a couple more laps. I think maybe. Depending on how far you want to be out uh, on that circuit. Seaborn is in for nearly 10 seconds. Uh, Torbjorn Mele battling away with Mark Werrell. We've also got a couple of others there as well. Oh, um, Daniel, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, so Sedgley now in. Who else is coming behind? Uh, that's going to be Matt Barnett. So Barnett is in the pit lane. Well, Barnett has been in the pit lane. I was going to say, did he get a drive through? Because... We, we knew have, he should have, have fixed the car, right? And then might have had a seven, might have gone over 17 incident points. So that'll be a uh, straightforward drive-through. Yeah. For Matt Barnett, it's a, it's a it's race a that's been, through. Yeah. yeah, it's a drive-through. It's uh, a race for the number 99 to forget, I'm afraid. Uh, these pit stops are going to be absolutely critical right now for these drivers, isn't it? Absolutely. They are when indeed. they do come in. So lighting up the rears was Daniel Sedgley. He was in the box for just under 15 seconds. And here is, uh, that's the number seven of Sergio Martinez de la Cruz. Getting up the inside of Mark Werrell in the uh, 93. Uh, Sunoco Chevrolet like Camry. Leader. They're not coming in yet. No, that's no they haven't. No. no get Van der is, ja uh, Jacolette is out, uh, is now in the pit lane. So everyone from eighth upwards. So Mark Werrell is going for the long strat. So Clark, Sedgley, LeMay, Jack Werrell, Pat Seaborn, Olsen Lear and Barnett have at least served one pit stop. Let's not forget the Vegard Olsen Lear came in on lap seven through a mistake of his own through turn number four. Um, so I think there's going to be a possibility that the 226 sim racing will wait to Camry. So here comes the leader, Van der Waals. Let's see how Perry, Stitchbury, et al. Uh, decide to respond. Perry so stays. Perry, Perry's continuing. So is Stitchbury in second. Uh, Alvaro Var Vasquez Garcia comes out of the final corner. Pearson dives into oh. pit road <laughs> and nearly Just. hits the entry cone. <laughs> um, we know. Uh, that, so, yeah. so the rest of them are pretty much gone to pit road. So this is, uh, we know now we've only got basically... Uh, six drivers that have a good... So, look at that. He gets the luxury spot, of course, being up front. So, get up there, and that's a good exit. Good. See, he's got the car pointed at a nice angle as well, too, to get on that gas and get out as quickly as possible. Yeah, line up some 11s. Is, um, you know, uh, not one there from David van der Waals. I think wanted to uh, just keep it nice and calm. Uh, there's Pearson. So, I'm 23. showing a... We'll get those pit stop times. That was, an, that was a pit stop times at the moment. That's quite, well, that was 50 seconds. 15 sec seconds stationary, 50 overall. Quickest so far has been Paul LeMay. Now I'm showing nine second 
stationary pit stop, 46 seconds. That took it about four seconds faster than anybody else. He's got that bloody, uh, what would you call it, that Red Bull pit stop strategy down. I'm not sure who's, who's, who's the fastest pit <laughs> I, stop. I, <laughs> I, I, I somehow think not. It might be a case that he may have uh, decided to go with less tyres than the opposition. Ah, okay. May have gone one side, may have gone, or might have, got, might have gone one side rather than doing both. Let me see a couple of cars, including Van der Waals, uh, up on both sides. Um, so with the NASCAR uh, tyre change, folks, it's normally one side, then it's the other. But here is Tim Perry leading the way, gunning for 170 points. He he knew he had to do everything to put it on the line here tonight at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the final round of this season of the JPB NASCAR Super Series, sponsored by AlloyLoungeRacing.co.uk. Yeah, there's your standings real Perry. quick, I guess. Terry, those two are the ones we're yeah. looking at right now, isn't it? Stitch, Berry, and Perry. You can do the math on that, but you can see right well, now, Stitch, Berry, and Perry, both of them have to go to pit road. Yeah. Yeah, they still do. The top six rounded out by Mark Werrell, who started down in 16th. Caution. Uh, oh, caution! Up 10 spots. We've got our first caution of the night with 13 laps to go. Right, Dean, oh. bring us up to speed. What happened, buddy? Uh, I'm going to show you at the moment. It looks like Carl Jacklett's had an accident. So this is... Uh, Gonna really spice things around. It's gonna give him a cheap pit stop, won't it, for the rest of the field? You're gonna expect him to go in, you're gonna expect Stitchbury to go in. Let's have a look real quick at what happened with Carl that's caused this one. Now he's banked up next to a car, like another car, so this is probably Jack closing Werrell. speed. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh, oh Jack, that's Jack just loses it. Jack, yeah, the, uh, the rear end went loose on Jack Werrell, and he straight away uh, ended up going right. And that's a hard hit for Carl Jacolette into the barriers. It's brought out our first caution of the night. And also the fact this could, well, this is going to give a free pit stop to the top six. So Perry, Stitchbury, Vasquez Garcia. Oh, I couldn't get it out of the head. So there's the pace car. Has to stay behind the pace car now, which means that Stitchbury will be able to go flat out here at the moment, of course, so they can catch him. There's a bit of traffic in between them. So that's why you see some cars, but that's perfectly okay. But we do expect them to go in. This is going to be a battle of pit stops. I would imagine right now you would be absolutely oh, crazy to stay out, wouldn't you? Because you're going to get absolutely eaten alive by those drivers with fresh boots. Yeah, I mean, sometimes that can be the case. But then it's also the fact that you want to have... You don't want to necessarily have the person you're battling in the championship right behind you. There are going to be lucky dogs. There are going to be wave arounds. Uh, that's what we've got currently at the moment. So, uh, lucky dogs and wave rounds are active, which means that we could have you and Stitchbury right up the rear bumper as we are seeing moves Here into pit lane. So, Perry is going in. Uh, Jack Werrell going in. Look, all of the top Everybody. six are in, as well as Jack Werrell in the number 65. So, this is the opportunity that Perry and Stitchbury have been waiting for to get down pit road, get a fresh set of tyres on that wagon, and then pedal to the metal. It's going to change everything around a little bit because David van der Waals is now the new leader following on from what will happen after this pit stop cycle. Let's see what happens here. Perry's going to be right at the end of the pit road. Stitchbury, Do the sound effects not that far behind him. <laughs> so. Oh, who had the back up? Was that Stitchbury that had it back up? And his pit, think pit box? Did. No. Um, that's crucial. Yes, it was. Stitchberry had to reverse back. That's compromised a little bit of time. Look, he's got. Oh dear. Yes. Vasquez Garcia's jumped him in. Yes. Yeah, Vasquez Garcia's jumped him in the pit lane. Wow. Well, hold the phone, folks, because now the fact that these drivers will have to uh, close on in to the pace car. We've got eleven to go. You know what they say about cautions, Dean? They do breed cautions. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, so this is interesting. So D I think D that worked out perfect for these drivers, especially this man, because David van der Vols, he boxed uh, on lap 25. No, and that was just a, you know, a few laps ago. So it was perfect for him. He came in at the right time. Of course, I wasn't expecting him. Hey, unless he's got a very good fortune teller and he can predict it. It's going to be... A <laughs> caution car come out true but, true but he's uh, looking good strong i mean he was leading this race for 90 percent of the time and uh he's looking good i think he's a, a good solid pick to say he's going to win this one for sure but how does that affect the rest of the drivers in this championship once again and i'll show you 
really quickly because once again these are the two that we need to worry about with that 13 point difference okay you and stitchbury folks is currently seventh he needs to be ninth at least to take the title from tim perry tim perry currently in p5 he's got to do something rather special now this has started to close up the field and i'm sure that this is possibly what you and stitchbury did not want with 10 laps to go to be in a possible a possible window where his championship lead could be at risk now the pressure cooker starts to build intensity and he is going to be sweating bullets like you would not believe. Looks like we might have a double file restart here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We've got 10 to, car, 10 to go. Pace car still out. Lights are out, which means the next time we will be going green here in Indianapolis. So it is going to be Van der Waals. It's going to be Paul Clark in second. Then Sedgley, LeMay, Perry, Vasquez Garcia, Stitchbury, Martinez de la Cruz. Torbjorn Mele rounding out the top nine. Mark Querrell in 10th, having started 16th in qualifying earlier on. What do you reckon it's out there, everybody? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, cats and dogs, everybody, your predictions out there. Let's go, let's go. Lepus, Stitch for the win. For the championship as well, too, for the dreams for the final race this season. Remember, safety cars breed safety cars, as you would imagine, too. And so Stitchbury is not in a great place, and you're in the middle of the field there. Anything goes pearl-shaped at the, at, the, at the business end. Well, even for Tim Perry as well, too, you're in big trouble. Yeah, so the field now makes its way through turn four. After the pace car pulls into the pit lane, we'll have nine to go out of 40 here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Perry and Stitchbury, fifth and seventh, respectively. It's Van der Waals and Clark on the front row. As we wait, pace car peels into pit lane. Get yourselves ready because the next nine laps are going to be something special. They start to accelerate. Green flag green, now green, green. will wave as we get things back under green flag racing. Van der Waals puts the pedal to the metal, gets a great launch ahead of Clark, who's got Sedgley up the inside. Who could make it an Olympus Esports? One, two, they are banging door panels. Perry's already got past LeMay. Stitchbury's already up to six, as it is a scramble for the win. Stitchbury oh. looking up the inside of LeMay, oh. and there's a little bit of a touch between the pair. And, Alva and, and Vasquez Garcia looking to the outside of Stitchbury. De La, uh, Martinez De La Cruz looking up the inside. Stitchbury's down to eighth. Stitchbury's down to eighth. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. This could be absolute dramas for Stitchbury. But Perry's got to make moves up to the race lead. And he's got to hope that you and Stitchbury on the road is not ninth by the checkered. Yeah, this is absolutely this... massive. Look at, the, look at the front two teammates. They can be working together at the moment. Paul Clark, of course, yeah. at P3. And, uh, and Tim Perry, of course, he's at P4. He needs to make moves there. He just might have just heard on his team radio that Stitchbury is in a little bit of trouble. Stitchbury's a bit of traffic back there too, but thankfully they have single filed out there. A little bit of a battle further back there, gentlemen, but I think I'm going to keep us focused on this because this is the championship hopes and dreams for these drivers this season, and we need to see how it's going to pan out. Oh, somebody hit the fence in the background. Oh, dear me. No. <laughs> um, but the big thing is, is that Stitchbury has not got the toe from Vasquez Garcia, who's in sixth. That's crucial around this circuit, this two-and-a-half-mile circuit here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. LeMay being uh, pushed along by Alvaro Vasquez Garcia in the number 15 Ford Mustang. We ride on board on the roof camp. Stitch free glances the wall coming out of turn number four. Out of the lead, too. Yeah, this is now Sedgley and Van der Waals, their teammates, but here and comes Tim Perry. Perry as well. He was looking up the inside of Paul Clark as LeMay tries to go high and wide, but Perry closes the door. Perry has only got a handful of laps to go. We've still got seven, including this one, until we see the checkered flag on the start-finish straight. Perry has got to get motoring on. He is losing time to Paul Clark because Paul, because Paul LeMay was right up his rear bumper. Vasquez Garcia is now challenging the number 27 Ford Mustang for fifth place. But Van der Waals and Sedgley for Olympus Esports are comfortably leading the way, but for how much longer? At the minute, the top seven rounded out by Ewan Stitchbury, covered by just a second and a half 
as we're very shortly going to go six to go now as we're on lap 35 out of 40 Perry has got to bring something ma magical out of the magician's hat and it can't just be a rabbit he's got to try and do something to get past Paul Clark and then close in on the Olympus Esports pairing of Van der Waals and Sedgley for not just second oh, but also yeah. for the race win and hope that Stitchbury doesn't have the best run of luck in the next six laps. Yeah, and the thing is too, look at that. So Tim Perry's catching at the moment. Paul, I thought, Paul, maybe I'd give him a little bit of a push from behind there to get him a little bit more draft to catch up there to Paul Clark. But you see that uh, Paul LeMay had, had tank slapped the fence a little bit. So I don't think that chance is going to give him too much of six to go. Tim Perry's just got to get on the absolute gasoline here. He's got to catch Paul Clark. With Stitchbury, he's back in P7. Still enough, still enough. But all Tim Perry can worry about right now is trying to get P3 and catch the leaders. Yeah, Perry's looking up the inside of Paul Clark through turn one for third place. Runs him a little bit wide out of turn one into turn two. Will Perry have the move completed? No, Clark is still keeping the throttle pinned around the outside as they come out of the exit of turn number two. Not enough. Martinez de la Cruz is putting the pressure on Stitchbury in the battle for seventh place but Perry might has got a nose in front of Paul Clark heading into turn three and now he's going to get the side draft he's oh. half a car length in front Ooh. Paul Clark still pressurizing him round the outside as they go through turn four Perry is trying all he can but he's losing he's hemorrhaging time Clark yeah. is not letting him get away Garcia's going to get for it too yeah well Gar Garcia Garcia has come out of nowhere. He was sixth at one point. He's going to make it three oh. wide across the stripe. Backs out of it through into turn one. And Clark runs yeah, high Clark and runs wide. High. And oh my goodness, LeMay's back into it. Garcia's into it. Stitchbury's in, in this as well. Martinez de la Cruz is right on the back of the number 22. Coming out of turn two onto the back stretch. Four to go, including this one. Drama as the... Uh, as Perry will not have enough points. Stitchbury just has to get it home. Stitchbury has to get it home. Perry's third. He's what? He's 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 over a second away from Sedgley in P2. Stitchbury and De La, uh, Martinez De La Cruz having an absolute ding-dong battle as we come across the line. Three to go. Van der Waals leads. Sedgley making it an Olympus Esports 1-2. Perry is losing time like nobody's business. He's 1.7 seconds off of the race leader. He's trying to break the toe of Paul LeMay, who's behind him in fourth. Alvaro Vasquez Garcia is in fifth. Sixth, it's Paul Clark. Seventh, Ewan Stitchbury, who knows he has to get it home at this point. Yeah. He's got Jack Werrell not that far behind him. And that very much is, well, no, it's uh, De La Cruz who, who's going to be behind him at some point. Uh, but was at one uh, one particular altercation just a few moments ago. Oh, Pat Seaborn oh, battling with Mark Werrell. We've got a caution. Caution with two to go. What's happened, wow. Dean? It's What's Mark. happened? It's Mark Werrell. Uh, Mark was already lapped down, and I think this might be a solo crash. I don't see anybody else. No, no, this is not. Have a look at this. Three, two, one. That's Jacqueline and Barnett and Mark Whoa. turns right into Barnett, spins around. Jackalette gets collected for the second time this evening. And that brings out the second caution of the night. You know what that means? That, this is going to be green and white. Yeah, green and white checkers. Green and white, and white checkers, I think, might be the uh, de rigueur at this point. But if you that is. Check that. Well, this is the thing. This is, I mean, as you said, you're saying Stitchbury just needs to bring it home, right? At that point, he does because yeah, he was exactly. safe. But this now gives Tim Perry the opportunity to catch that one second gap, remember, he had to the Olympus Esports. He now has an opportunity to just yes. send it and just send a prayer and just hope you get past both and then cross your fingers and dot your T's and I's to see whether or not Stitchbury is going to finish. Because what a Stitch, if, if Tim Perry takes a lead, what does Stitchbury need, minimum? Ninth. No, nice. so at the moment, okay. if he stays P7, he's fine. Yeah, he's P7, fine. P8, he's uh, P9, he's golden. He's absolutely golden. But who'd have thought of that poor... Uh, you have to feel for Mark Werrell a little bit. I, I mean, he's a fellow yeah. commentator, so you know, yeah. that, that can sometimes happen. We don't when, give him when any, did Mark any... Pitt... Don't give him no, any Mark pitted at exactly yeah. the same time, didn't he? Mark pitted at exactly yeah. the oh, same dummies. time as everybody else. Into the pit road, look. 
Oh, dear They're me. throwing dummies, my friend. It's like rugby. Some drivers are actually coming in. Mark Burrell is coming in. But uh, these drivers have got nothing to lose at this point. At the end of the day, they're just going to see if they make yeah. it. Yeah. They're having some fun, why not? Uh, see the season out. It's been absolutely fantastic. But the rest of it, of course, is more crucial, isn't it? If the leaders were to go in, what would you have done with your Tim Perry? I was just like, I'm staying out. i got track position. You'd have to go for it, that. Yeah. Well, the thing is, folks, it's still showing three to go, so we are going to have a run to the finish. Um, it's it's going to be the case. They are still going to have the lucky dogs and the waiver rounds uh, to tighten the field up. So whoever gets the lucky dog or a waiver round, they will literally be like Cole Trickle in the final race at Days of Thunder, <laughs> like literally getting at max speed before the green flag drops. Oh, you so, want a kiss from Nicole? Um, I'd love to have a kiss from Nicole back in those days, yes. Um... <laughs> I, oh, yes, uh, I'm letting bad. on. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're letting on both our respective ages because we, <laughs> we, you know, at the end of the day, we do have a bit of a laugh and a giggle about that, me and Dean. But you know what? I think the only way that this can be decided is by having a proper finish. And of course, we are showing three to go on the second caution of the night. A three-car incident involving Mark Werrell, um, Matt Barnett, and Carl Jacklett. Carl Jacklett hasn't had the run of luck, unfortunately, in the photomedia.uk Chevy Camaro. We're just going to have a look at the replay again. So Mark's on the low side and he's going right and then bang, straight in pinball wizardry. The car manages to, the, the car that was behind managed to move out of the way. A real shame, but I think the thing was Mark was taking the traditional ra racing line through that turn three and then, yeah, it, it just it happens that none of these drivers at this particular circuit are one going to give in. Um, so no one going down pit road. This is uh, why. So this is why I think that you. you, you this may. I, I, I'm really getting a sneaking feeling. This might cause another. We might have another caution after this because we got these cars bunched up and we have a championship hopes and dreams for Tim and Stitch Perry, of course, as well too. Is want to do his absolute best. I don't think he's going to want to sit there in P7 at the moment because if a few True. people get past him. And Tim Perry wins, he's in trouble, so he's got to go for it himself, which means they're going to get even more aggressive that, that, that they've started to pick up with of late. And I just I'm thinking, I wouldn't be surprised if Tim Perry doesn't send a, a dive ball, a dive yeah. bomb down there. Well, but remember that David's going to have a huge advantage off this uh, race start because you generally always do. You're going to hear that green, green, green first, and you hit that loud pedal. It's more about whether Daniel can hold off Tim Perry, I think, for that P2, and then see how it charges for the rest to go. I think Tim's going to have a, you know, he's going to have the bit between his teeth because the lights are out on the pace car, folks. With two to go. We're going to go back under green flag racing here. So we've gone into overtime. Bottom uh, is two out, bottom of the ninth, if you want to use as many American sport terms as you like. But now you can see Tim Perry weaving from side to side. They're down the back stretch at the moment, heading into turn three. So it's all about what happens now because Stitch Free has got Martinez de la Cruz with him in the number seven Toyota Camry, the highest placed Toyota uh, this evening. Apart from, well, Jack Werrell at one point was actually up into the top six. Um, look at this, Ty. qualified 11th. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Tim Perry is now psyched up and ready because. We are about to go back under full course green flag racing here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So green flag is primed. Pace car now peels off to the left and heads down pit road. It's Van der Waals and Sedgley on the front row for Olympus Esports. Can Tim Perry take the win? What's going to happen to you in Stitchbury? Because boogity, 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 we go racing once Begun. again with two to go. Tim's got what him. A launch. Already? Yes. Tim got Sedgley already, but Van der Waal's got an absolute lightning restart. Uh, Gar uh, Vasquez Garcia now up into P4 ahead of Paul LeMay. Paul Clark, Ewan Stitchbury has got Sergio Martinez de la Cruz and Pat Seaborn for close company. Well, Pat Seaborn didn't get the greatest of restarts, but Perry now senses the opportunity. They've got less than two and three. Well, they've got less than three. Uh, three and three quarter miles left of this circuit to go. They'll have another four turns to go after the next one that they negotiate because the white flag will be out next Stitch time. P6. 
Stitchbury has got through. The maze had a bit of a drama, but we are going to have the white flag out this time. Perry now gunning for the race lead with one to go. White flag is out. Here we go. Two and a half miles it's left to crown part. this season. It's champion for the JPB NASCAR Super Series as Perry is absolutely pushing the limit of adhesion through out of turn number one. Gaining, gaining, gaining on David van der Waals, the Flying Dutchman, who has been the de facto leader pretty much since we got going. And once he took the race lead, he hasn't really looked back. Perry is close to that title, but Stitchbury in sixth spot has one hand on that trophy. Turn three for the final time. Now one more to go. It's all about what Van der Waals does now. Perry is going to put everything on the line. But out of the final corner, it's a long run to the start-finish line. Because now it is going to be a case of what will happen here. Check it out this time. Van der Waals takes it. Perry is second. Stitch free wraps up the title in sixth. With a late-minute caution with three to go. Van der Waals win, wins here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Tim Perry becomes your runner-up, but your winner and your JPB NASCAR Super Series champion is the number 22 from Wales, Newport's Ewan Stitchbury. Oh, I tell you what, wouldn't you? you it, it's almost going for that situation, wasn't it, between Lewis Hamilton in the 2008 situation where is that Glock, you know, you're coming down to a couple of things. Tim Perry did everything he could. That actually, that last caution helped him gain that one place, but Stitchbury had just had enough in the bank anyway. He was in that P6, it was comfortable. He knew all he had to do is bring it home and uh, and cross his fingers to, to hope that there wasn't a big wreck up the road there. And uh, don't give it, of course, David had dominated this race from start. I had to give it away too. So Garcia was a flying orange machine quite a bit, wasn't it? flying yeah, everywhere like, yeah like <laughs> yeah. someone had uh, opened up his cat his can of fanta and it just literally just exploded with the amount of carbonation inside of it but there you go van der Waals, the olympus esports driver it was nearly a one two for the team essentially running out the top three and van der Waals having every single right to celebrate uh in the rescheduled so can you uh, round it. five you can burn them out too yeah. my friend yeah stitch free has got every right for tooth and nail kept it in a, uh, anything higher than ninth place and there we go the number 22 ford mustang lights up the rear tires here on the start finish straight what a drive by you and stitchbury knew he didn't have to pick up the win but there are your results for the uh rescheduled round five the uh, final round of the jp b nascar super series here at indianapolis motor speedway david one uh, van der waals from the netherlands Picks up the win by just over two tenths of a second ahead of our gallant runner-up this season, Altitude Esports Tim Perry. Daniel Sedgley could have made it a one-two for Olympus Esports, but rounds out the rostrum in third place. Great job by Alvaro Garcia uh, in the number 15, taking fourth ahead of Paul Clark from Island Racing. Ewan Stitchbury, the ORA Motorsports driver, becomes your JPB NASCAR Super Series uh, winner this season takes the title by finishing sixth ahead of Pat Seaborn, Sergio Martinez de la Cruz, Paul LeMay, Mark Werrell rounds out the top 10 ahead of Torbjorn Melo, Vegard Olsen Lear, Matt Barnett, Carl Jacolette, Stuart Pearson, and unfortunately Jack Werrell um, ending up down at the bottom end of the tree. But uh, we have got some drivers to interview yeah we'll I take think. a quick uh, we'll take a quick break of course because remember the series yeah. has been sponsored by a butt kicker look at that i say is he stuck has he locked his front brakes completely and he's on the brickyard and then both of these of course we're looking at the 32 <laughs> machine that has won this race of course at vanderville's and then stitchberry of course burning it out there so don't go anywhere but kicking yourself into this fantastic season
Well, after a dramatic last minute caution here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, we have crowned a champion, but we've also had a race winner. Let's bring in the number 32 from Olympus Esports. Let's bring in, if we can, David van der Waals from the Netherlands. Uh, oh, David, good evening. Uh, congratul congratulations on the W. It was hard fought out there for what was slightly more than 40 laps. We ended up with 43 after that last minute caution with three to go. How are you feeling? Uh, lucky is, a, I think, the right word. Uh, we noticed halfway through the race, me and Dan noticed that uh, Tim Perry and Stitchbury, they were saving fuel quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we kind of just threw a gamble up on pitting early. Uh, we saw the people with new tires were a bit faster and then we hope for a caution, which luckily happened. Yeah, it's always the, it's always the way. I mean, um, we were saying in the broadcast that cautions do breed cautions, and we got the first one just after the halfway point, and then with three to go, um, was it just a case of you and Daniel just deciding, you know what, we're going to go full throttle? Yes, we know that Tim and you are saving fuel, but was it the best strategy for Olympus Esports? Because you guys were that close to a 1-2 tonight for the final round. Um, so I, I think their fuel saving strategy kind of fell through the moment we got the caution. Um, yeah, it's not really a track you think you would get much caution set mm -hmm. because the racing tends to not even be that close, but I mean, they just got very unlucky and then me and Dan just took the opportunity, I guess. But still to, to still have a one, three, uh, for you and Daniel, uh, for the, the team at Olympus Esports. Must have been a pretty good feeling, despite Tim deciding to spoil the party a little bit, hey? <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, I mean, we got the one to uh, last race around with Connor and me. Um, but yeah, I mean, we pretty much entered the, the, the league last round. And uh, we've put on four podiums in total with two wins. So it feels pretty good. And uh, it lays a solid foundation for whatever the truck series starts. Brilliant. David, congratulations on the W tonight. Thank you for jumping in in the uh, interview booth post-race and uh, look forward to seeing you again on another JPB League very, very soon indeed. Thank you very much and uh, congratulations to Stitchbury for the championship. So thank you very much, David van der Waals. Um, let's see if we can bring in our uh, second place finisher, but hopefully uh, someone who we, who we want to have a chat with. Let's bring in Tim Perry. Tim, good evening. Hello. Man, it was close. It was so, <laughs> so close. Um, listen, talk us through your your strategy because you knew that you and had to finish ninth or higher and you had to go all guns blazing for the W tonight to, to get 170 points. It was not an easy task. I mean, we had a mid-race caution and then we had that caution three to go that gave you that little bit of daylight at the end of the tunnel, but Ewan was still there or thereabouts to so just bring it home, wasn't he? Yeah, man, it was really interesting. I absolutely loved that race so much. It was so good. But uh, yeah, I think um, to, I was looking to fuel save at the start. Um, I had a fuel number that I needed to hit and um, I was following David at the start and I could tell he was going too quick. And so I knew I basically had to back off him. But um, I definitely would have made it at the end. But I think uh, Stisby would have made it as well. So I think if we hadn't have had the caution, it probably would have been me one and him two. But obviously, he may have gone into trouble. And then with that caution, it was in kind of interesting again, because I'd obviously slightly fresher tyres than the guys in front of me. Mm -hmm. And he was right in that mid-pack. So I thought, you know, there's always a chance he could get taken out and I could, I could get the win. So it was always kind of like interesting. It was always there or thereabouts, but just didn't quite work out for me. But I gave everything I had today. So I'm happy. Well, second tonight here in Indianapolis, the rescheduled round five and also second in the championship. Tim, great efforts all the way through the season. I know for sure we're going to see you back on a JPB broadcast very soon, but thanks for jumping in uh, to the booth for a post-race interview and uh, well done on all your efforts uh, tonight and throughout the season here at the uh, NASCAR Super Series. Yeah, thanks for your yeah, great Tim, commentary, real quick, guys. Do you want to thank your sponsors, my friend, for the 83 machine? Yeah, of course. Yeah, Altrud Sports, absolutely amazing team. Uh, Mark Fetcher runs a great ship there, mainly on the roadside. But I'm trying to drag him over to the NASCAR more and more. But um, Mr. Hedge Photography, Sim Stickers, um, and all, all our other sponsors, absolutely fantastic. Cheers, guys. 
Brilliant. A big thank you there to Tim Perry, uh, not only uh, second in tonight's race, but also second in the championship. But we've got to bring the man of the moment in uh, who finished sixth in this race, brought it home nice and safe and sound eventually. Let's bring in ORA Motorsports. You and Stitchbury are JPB NASCAR Super Series champion. Well, Ewan, you've got it. You've got the title in the bag. Congratulations. How are you feeling right now, buddy? Um, oh, I mean, obviously, first of all, congratulations to everyone who ran this season. It was a really, a really fun, really fun championship and credit to the organizers and, and everyone for putting it all together. Um, I really enjoyed it. I uh, came into Indy with a lot of, I, I sort of put myself under pressure, uh, mm -hmm. knowing that there were certain things that had to happen for me to win. Um, and it, it sort of all fell together. I sort of tried to focus on my own race um, try and forget everything else that's happening around me and enjoy the run. I got a little bit stressful when the caution started coming out because I was kind of banking on a green flag race mm -hmm. as it was at Pocono. But yeah, it, it all sort of fell together at the end and I'm really happy with it. It, it, it was a, a nice season and a good way to cup it off. Um, also, we know um, we we had a chat with David Van der Waals from Olympus Esports that there was some fuel saving going on. Please be completely brutally honest with me. How much fuel were you trying to save a lap to uh, to to keep it nice and tidy and and get to the checkered, finishing at least ninth or highest to get get the title? Yeah, so I, I was keeping an eye on my numbers. I think at full at full speed, you're doing around about two liters a lap, mm -hmm. um, which would have done about thirty eight and a half laps. With obviously with the formation lap, it takes it down to around about 38. So you need to save about two laps of fuel. So you're looking at sort of 70% throttle on the straights. Um, it was a bit dejecting to sort of let some cars go by, but I thought I'd let the race come to me later on. Um, sort of kept the big picture in mind, same as it was at Pocono. And uh, yeah, I would have been happy had it stayed green. But it was a bit of excitement to, to, to round the field back up again and, and get door to door right at the end. Yeah. Um, anyone you'd like to thank, including your team at o uh, ORA Motorsports, before we let you go and uh, enjoy the rest of the evening? <laughs> Being on cloud nine at the moment, my friend. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, obviously, uh, a credit to Matt for, for, for joining me as well. We've had a couple other guys run it throughout the season, Tyler and uh, and Kalen. Um, but a credit again to the rest of the fields, because it started off as a bit of a shaky start in Daytona. Uh, Charlotte, we had a few cautions as well, but you could tell that people have really put a lot of time to, to tidy up a tiny little bit and we've had some great racing since then so I really want to thank the whole field for, for, for showing up week in week out and putting on a great display Brilliant, you and Stitchery are season champion for JPB NASCAR Super Series well done buddy, thanks thank for joining much. us in the booth and we look forward to seeing you Congratulations, uh, once again yeah, my friend. Of, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other leagues that we have here on, uh, on JPB oh, yeah. but Thanks we'll, for joining us, buddy. The, I'll be back for the trucks. Absolutely. You almost That's got us what... a little nervous there. We we kind of thought we wouldn't want it to be like, is that Glock moment? You know what I mean? When <laughs> can that championship <laughs> feel? If you drop back there, I was I was nervous of you in the midfield as well. Absolutely nervous because I was like, geez, if there's a big wreck, you're, you're taking out, and then mm -hmm. you you know you're in trouble. But you know what, my friend? Yeah, you, you, you got a bit spicy. But certainly entertaining. Yeah. I hope everybody did enjoy yeah. that as well. I hope so. <laughs> Brilliant, you and thanks for joining us, buddy. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll see you for the trucks very soon. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Well, that really wraps up our post race interview section here of this rescheduled and now final round of the JPB NASCAR Super Series here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. David Van der Waals from Olympus Esports, the race winner, but you and Stitch Free from ORA Motorsports, your champion, Dean. I couldn't have, I, I was, you, you know, when you said safety cars breed safety cars and then three laps to go, we have a caution. So instead of running 40, 40 laps, we ran to 43. I was so happy that we had two laps left of green flag racing. And it was, I was on tender hooks. I think my adrenaline was through the roof, my voice, um, <laughs> which you can all hear is not a hundred percent because it wasn't that great the other night when I was about to do a broadcast and I had to get someone to sub pretty quickly but what a race to cap off the season oh it was uh, it was at the Brickyard too so it's one of the best tracks you can see there right there there's the Brickyard and these drivers of course both of them celebrating that's David for the win there of course and Stitchbury with the ultimate trophy 
uh, of the end of the season. It's been fantastic. Keep rest your voice, my friend, because I don't know how many bloody days that you said of <laughs> carding that you've done. So take oh, a breather. Me. I mean, well, this man no, is well, a machine, gentlemen, ladies and boys and girls. He's a well, machine. Yeah, well, folks, uh, if you want some GT4 action, we've got the JPB GT4 Championship Global Challenge Round 2, Season 4 from the Autodromo uh, Internacional do Algarve tomorrow night from 7.50pm UK. Coming up, we've also got Prospect E-Racing League Abu Dhabi Tier 1, um, which actually should be broadcasting now as we speak. Uh, we've got the BSC Spring Season Round 9 at Texas Motor Speedway at 10 to 1 tomorrow morning. Uh, follow that up with Prospect C Racing League Tier 2 at Abu Dhabi uh, tomorrow night at uh, 10 to 10. Uh, Radical Race Series Season 2 of 2024, Round 5 at Emila. Then we've got the OGRL Coffee Cup Season 1, Round 8 at Road America on the 14th. And then IGP Fun form, uh, Super Formula Lights at Twin Ring Motegi for Round 5. Well, thank you very much for tuning in to another broadcast, which has been a JP Broadcasting production with Dean Biggles and myself, Alex Goldschmidt, um, providing you with a play-by-play -play action. As I always like to say, race hard, race fair, and if in doubt, go flat out. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Good night.